In this section we're going to be looking at, how, looking at how we add watermarks to documents and we'll be working with the author's draft practice file which you can find in the chapter 9 folder. Now you'll find watermarks under the page layout tab on the ribbon. You'll see it here. Now a watermark as it says here is ghosted text behind the main content of a page and if you click on it there are four watermarks you can see here by default. Now you can click on any of these and it will add that watermark in the background. Now let's just zoom out here so that we can see the whole page and you can see the watermark there in the background. And you can change that watermark to any type that you want. But you can also customise it as well as getting more watermarks uh, online from office.com. Let's say we want a custom watermark. We can uh, select here uh, in the uh, printed watermark section. I'll move this off to the side so we can see what the effect is. We can have no watermark, we can have a picture watermark which we'll talk about in a minute, or a text watermark. Now let's say we want uh, this to say draft. So we can type draft in there and you'll see the word draft has appeared across horizontal or if I put a little uh, uh, dot in that box and click apply now uh, uh, diagonally across the page. You can also change the colour of the watermark, though you should be careful not to make it too strong that you won't be able to read the text on top of it. And you can do uh, other things such as change the, uh, the font here. Uh, Impact is uh, a good one to use. There you go. And there are plenty of other fonts that you can, uh, that you can choose from um, in uh, Windows and in Windows, whatever version of Windows it is you have. So, let's say we want to uh, change this to uh, the draft, we'll say, I want to put the date in, and you'll see that the text automatically resizes um, to uh, accommodate uh, what it is you want to say on the page. Now, let's have a look at a picture watermark. Here you can select picture and we want to have a look at the chapter 9 folder where there is a practice file here, OTSI logo. So select that and press the insert button. Now it hasn't appeared yet, we haven't pressed apply so we'll click apply now and there's the logo in the background but it's it's a bit big so we can rescale it here. Let's say we want it 200% let's say we want it 150% and so on this washout uh, tick box if I click apply will make the uh, if we untick that it, it uh, won't fade out the logo so it'll be in uh, uh, the image so it'll be uh, full color so you will want washout to be ticked just to make sure that you can read the text in the foreground when you're happy with your watermark just click the close button and that watermark will now automatically be added to every page in the document in the next segment we're going to look, have a look at how we insert symbols and equations into documents. Now that we've looked at how we can add watermarks to a document, let's have a look at how we can add symbols and equations to a document. And in this exercise we'll be working with the welcome document in the chapter 9 folder of the practice files. Now if you move down to the bottom of this document uh, we want to be able to add some more information. Now let's say for instance that we want to add a, uh, a symbol here which isn't uh, on our computer's keyboard. Now we can do this in the insert tab on the ribbon by clicking on symbol on the far right. You can see here it says insert symbols that aren't on your computer's keyboard. So we'll click on that. Now immediately here there are a variety of symbols available to us from copyright, trademark to the euro symbol, that for the Japanese yen, uh, traditional uh, division sign and uh, a little happy smiley face. But there's a more symbols button below so we'll click on this. Now this brings up a whole raft of different symbols including recently used symbols here and we can have a look through at uh, all of the uh, available symbols and characters. We have fractions here, uh, we've got um, Greek characters here, um, we have uh, 
other international uh, letters here and so on down to uh, all sorts of uh, uh, additional graphics like bullets and uh, and line graphics and so on. Let's say we want to insert the euro symbol so we'll click on euro and press insert and now we can either move this window out of the way or we can close it. We'll close it uh, because we uh, it's in the way for now and we can say it's going to be uh, 675 euros for our European venue. Let's click on symbol again and click on the more symbols link and there's also a special characters tab where you can insert uh, additional characters here including paragraph breaks uh, ellipses and uh, spaces and so on. These can be very useful for people who uh, may have difficulty in using a computer's keyboard. We can also insert uh, equations and we'll have a look um, here if you uh, uh, put a couple of, uh, couple of uh, carriage returns in then we've got equation here on the ribbon under the insert tab on the right just above symbol and there are a few different types of equation uh, that word supports by default and we can just click on one of these and it will insert that equation into the document as you'll see here or if uh, if we undo that then we can go and insert uh, any equation that we want we can get more equations online from the office.com website or we can build an equation ourselves here there are all sorts of tools here for building an equation let's say we want to insert a fraction there are different types of fraction that we can have here let's say we want uh, this stacked fraction and we can type in the little boxes what it is we want we can insert uh, an integral uh, integral here perhaps and uh, when we're happy with that fraction we can uh, uh, with that equation we can insert uh, another custom one next to it and there's all sorts of uh, symbols we can use here let's say we want that one there then we want to insert a radical and we'll have the square root of g and so on and there are all sorts of tools here for being able to build equations from scratch again the built-in equations are here on the equations button on the left we have uh, different types of, uh, of equation we have um, all sorts of uh, uh, features that can be added to equations different types of brackets different types of functions accents operators and matrices the equation uh, features in Word 2010 are really very powerful indeed. Now in the next section we're going to look at how we can draw and modify shapes. Now that we've looked at how we can insert symbols and equations into a document let's have a look at how we can draw and insert shapes. Now we're, for this exercise we're going to use a blank document so you want to open yourself one of those. On the insert tab on the ribbon you will see a shapes button. Now if you click on this you'll see there's a great many different shapes that come with uh, Office 2010 and with Word 2010 by default. Let's say we want to insert this no symbol here. So we'll click on that and then we can click and we can drag to make that no symbol the size we want but you'll see it's rubber banding here so we want to make sure that it stays round if you hold down the shift key when you resize it you'll see that it stays the right size and release the mouse button when you're ready now we can do all sorts of things like change its fill color we can change its style let's say we want to make it uh, 3d uh, here and remember that if you have text you want to wrap text around it here we have the wrap text button and uh, you want to wrap text around it to make it easier to place within the document 
So let's insert another shape now. Let's say we want, for instance, uh, we'll have um, this uh, ten pointed star here. So we'll click on that and we can make that whatever shape we want and click when we're done. Again, we can change the style of it as you can see here and we can wrap text around it. Also here in uh, in the shapes there are additional tools here for being able to uh, draw lines yourselves. You can scribble, uh, you can draw arcs or straight lines and you can draw whatever shapes it is you want in uh, Word 2010 and uh, you can have a tremendous flexibility with any shapes that you want to draw though um, I am a technical expert and clearly not an artist. So in the uh, next segment uh, we're going to uh, uh, look at something that I am better at uh, which is inserting screen clippings and screenshots. Okay, so so far in this section we've looked at inserting watermarks, symbols, equations and uh, drawings and shapes. So now let's look at screen clippings, otherwise known as screenshots. In this exercise we'll be using the Agenda Draft practice document from the Chapter 9 folder. Now, we have here the annual general meeting details uh, for uh, this building association at Bellevue Library and we want to be able to uh, insert a map on how to get there. So we'll move to the beginning of the uh, second page and we want to insert a picture. Now here I've searched online for directions to Bellevue Library and here we have a map. So we'll want to keep this window open. Now if we go back to our document and go to the insert tab there's an option here to insert a screenshot. Now it'll show you the available windows. If we click on this image here, it will insert that entire window, which we don't want, so we'll undo that. We'll go back to the Insert tab, and we want to insert a screen clipping. Now it's going to show us the available window, and you can see here that we have a crosshairs, and the screen has sort of faded. With the crosshairs, we can drag and select the shape that we want, we want the map here, and release the mouse button when we're done, and then that shape is then inserted into Word as a graphic. Again, there's all sorts of things we can do about it. We can look at the different picture styles here, put a, a, a border or a frame around it, and, uh, and so on. Let's say we want to use that. So it's very easy to uh, insert screen clippings into Word 2010 documents. In fact, it's one of the easiest things that you can do. Now, that's all for this section. In the next section, we're going to look at organizing and arranging content within our documents.